Special thanks to Patreon supporter The Grand Pope for making this tutorial possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, scared we're here bringing you another Minecraft pre-World War 1 BAFTA build tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building USS Olympia C6. USS Olympia is a protected cruiser that saw service in the United States Navy from her commissioning in 1895 until 1922. The vessel became famous as the flagship of Commodore George Dewey at the Battle of Manila Bay during the Spanish-American War in 1898. The ship was decommissioned after returning to the U.S. in 1899, but was returned to active service in 1902. She served until World War I as a training ship for naval cadets and as a floating barracks in Charleston, South Carolina. In 1917, she was mobilized again for war service, patrolling the American coast and escorting transport ships. After World War I, Olympia participated in the 1919 Allied intervention in the Russian Civil War and conducted cruises in the Mediterranean and Adric Seas to promote peace in the unstable Balkan countries in 1921. The ship carried the remains of World War I's unknown soldier from France to Washington, D.C., where his body was interned in the Arlington National Cemetery. Uh, cemetery. Olympia was decommissioned for the last time in December 1922 and placed in reserve. Over time, the ship eventually became a museum ship and is now um, a ship that you can actually visit in Philadelphia. Um, so overall, really cool ship and some pretty interesting history for it. We don't really have too many, actually I think we only have one other pre-World War One ship in our collection, so it's always nice to add a uh, another ship to it in terms of um, a U.S. ship this time, the USS Olympia. Overall, I think it's a really nice build and should be a pretty cool addition if you're looking for some, um, you know, really kind of old looking ships and this one here is going to be perfect for you. It is done up in the color scheme that it is present in the museum. I'm not sure if during World War I it was painted all gray like other ships were or if it was kept it's white and kind of um, off brownish um, superstructure color, but that's the color we have here going for it. Obviously, you could convert this to all gray and probably replicate the... Um, the actual uh, World War One version a little bit better, um, but overall it's a really cool build. Uh, came out really good. And before we go ahead and do take a look at it, I do want to go ahead and give a special thanks to Patreon supporter uh, the Grand Pope for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel more, you already do. Feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video description, where you can go ahead and pledge a small amount to the channel every month, and in doing so, earn a viewer request you're choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel. It's really greatly appreciated. So definitely feel free to check that out. Again, link is always going to be in the video description for that. With that though, let's go ahead and dive in here to take a look at the Olympia. So this here is kind of it's a little bit of a later version. Um, from what it seems like, the earlier versions did not actually have um, these um, uh, hole mounted um, guns. I for some reason cannot uh, remember the name of them. Uh, but they have the hole mounted guns here on the sides. I think this was something that was added in a little bit later. Um, it has the f main cannon, so the main cannons here in the front, in the back, and also the secondary guns, which I think may have been added a little bit later on. Um, you know, during the its service career. Um, but it looks really cool. Got a nice amount of guns on it. As you can see, the hole here is all in a white color, and then the superstructure is kind of in this kind of goldish brown color, uh, which is cool. Again, kind of mimics what the uh, color scheme of the U.S. Navy was really at that time with the white ships and the brown superstructure. Um, superstructure, pretty basic here. I mean, it's a really pre-World War One ship, so nothing a whole lot going on here. We even have some mass here, even with these... Um, rope ladders going up to it. We have the lifeboats, uh, just some uh, smokestacks, funnels, all that stuff in this area, and that's really the ship. There's not a whole lot going on, no real anti-aircraft weapons, nothing like that. Um, it's a pretty straight basic ship and really small. This is considered a cruiser even though it is a little bit smaller than some of the World War II destroyers we've made. So overall, cool ship. Uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer. Alright guys, so moving into our first layer here, we will be going ahead and starting off with layer number one. Now we're starting with uh, layer one here and this layer is going to sit in the water so you do want to make sure that you build this properly. You can see here we have this brick top slab that's on the very front bow of our ship and you can see that this sits right here. Now this is a top slab and you can see the blue concrete here representing our water level. You want your top slab to sit like this in the water. Very important, obviously you don't want your ship to sit too high or too low in the water so just make sure that, that is all correct. After that's done though, we're going to go ahead and then place down a brick top slab going back from um, this like so. And then we're going to go ahead and place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 red concrete blocks back, and then a brick wall here on the end. 
We're going to go ahead and go back up to the front and on our first red concrete block, we're going to place down an acacia wood trap door to both sides and we're going to close it like so. We'll then place down two red stained glass panes going back and then two brick walls after those glass panes. We'll then take our red concrete, we're going to go back one, two, three, four, five, and same thing over here, one, two, three, four, five. Then taking our brick walls, we're going to go back one, two, brick walls, one, two, red stained glass panes, two brick walls, two red stained glass panes. We're going to take our lightning rods, we're going to go back two lightning rods, and same thing will be done over here, one, two, and then a skeleton skull come off those uh, lightning rods like that. After that is all done there, that is all you're going to do there for layer two, and with that we'll be going ahead and move on to our next, or sorry, layer number one, and with that we'll be going ahead and move on to layer number two. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number two. For layer two to start with, we're going to place down a diary wall here on the front, then we're going to go back with one and two smooth quartz full blocks. We're going to go then place down a polished blackstone button on both sides of this first block, and then a white stained glass paint on both sides of the second. We then want to place down a diary wall that's going to go back on both sides here, another white smooth quartz block here in the center and then a white stained glass pane to both sides now we're going to go then also take ourselves a gray wool block and we're going to place it down here in the center like so and then continue on we're going to go and then place down another gray wool block here in the center then another smooth quartz block to both sides of a polished blackstone button on the side of those blocks we'll then place down another gray wool block in the center a white stroker box like this to both sides a trip bar hook coming off those um, shulker box. So after those uh, trip bar hooks on both sides, we're going to go ahead and place down one, two, three gray wool down the center, one, two, three smooth quartz to both sides, and then three polished black stone buttons on the sides there of those blocks. We're going to go ahead and then place down another gray wool block in the center, a white shulker box to both sides, and again a trip bar hook on the side here of those shulker boxes. We'll place down again two gray uh, wool blocks down the center here, and then we're going to place down two smooth quartz blocks to both sides. We'll take our polished black stone buttons and we're going to place them on the side here of these blocks as well. We're going to go then place down another smooth quartz block here in the center, followed by a direct wall to both sides, another gray wool block in the center, another smooth quartz block to both sides, again followed by a trip bar hook. Then after we have that done, we're going to go then take our smooth quartz, we're going to place down one, two, three, and four blocks down the center one, two, three white stained glass panes, and one, two, three white stained glass panes. We're also going to go ahead and place down a stair, coming off the back here like so, a polished black stone to both, or button to both sides of this block here, and then also a skeleton skull come off the side here of this stair like that. We're going to go ahead and place down a block here, uh, or actually, we're going to leave that as it is for right now. Now at this point, um, basically depending on what version you are so if you are on uh, Java we can go ahead and use a debug stick however if you're not on Java uh, we do have these four guns here which really the only way you can kind of do them is to place down an end rod here um, coming off the walls here and then on the back here coming off the skeleton skulls toward the back however if you are on Java we can kind of go ahead and do something a little bit cooler and kind of looks a little bit nicer overall for the build what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and basically skip a block off from the walls here in the front, we're going to place down a trip bar hook on the side of these blocks. We'll then go ahead and grab ourselves a debug stick. So just like this, using this command right here. And pressing enter will give us this debug stick. We'll then left click the trip bar hook until we get selected facing. We'll right click this and we'll rotate this so it basically uh, comes off the wall. So it looks like that. We can then left click it again to do selected powered and it should say false we right click it it'll actually extend forward so it kind of looks like a little bit of like our casemate guns and that's the name i was looking for earlier so it kind of looks like the casemate guns there on the side works pretty good and we're just gonna go and do the same powered technique here for these other trip bar hooks um, again really nice way just to kind of show that these little casemate games on the side without doing those really big um end rods and also on the back here as well we're gonna do our trip bar hooks we're gonna do the same thing and we're gonna go ahead and just rotate these um, so that they're coming off the skeleton skulls like that and then we want to go and just make again extend them back like so and once you have that all done that's pretty much it for this layer again the java uh, version you get a little bit of extra detail there with your casemates um, but really they aren't really a deal breaker whether you're able to include them or not anyways though that is going to do it for layer number two and with that let's move on up to layer number three Moving into our next layer, we have layer three. For layer three to start with, we're gonna place down a birchwood fence gate on top of this diorite wall. We're gonna open this toward the back and then we're gonna place down two daylight detectors back from that fence gate. We'll also place down a birchwood sign on both sides of the daylight detector, like so. We're gonna go then place down a dark oakwood fence gate here, open it toward the back, then a stripped oak wood block here, and then a gray carpet to both sides of that block. 
We then want to place down a granite wall, and then we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, stripped oak wood blocks back. And well, for Java players, we're going to go ahead and then place down two pistons. If you're not on Java, I'd recommend using end portal frames as an alternative here to the pistons. But uh, again, that's kind of up to you guys. Again, uh, end portal for or the end yeah the end portal frames will work, and uh, pistons if you're on Java and have access to the debug stick. We'll then place down a stripped uh, oak wood log here, a narrow dark oak wood fence gate, which will be opened up toward that block. And then on the back here, we're going to go ahead and very simply just place down a redstone repeater, separate the notches from each other like so. And we're going to go ahead and just place down an end rod on top of the stair. And then one more that kind of goes up like that at an angle. Also here on the front, we're going to go ahead and place down a iron bar on top of this fence gate here. Now, once we have that done on the sides, we're going to go ahead and place down a fire pot on top of these two walls here. We then want to go ahead and place down a player head that's going to go on the side of this oak wood block here and end rod forward, player head, end rod forward. Then we're going to place down an end rod, a wall, a end rod, and then we want to go ahead and then place down another player head, end rod coming off the player head, another player head, and an end rod coming off of it. And we're going to go ahead and basically just do the same thing to the other side. So I'm going to go into this side a little bit quicker as I already explained the other side in detail and you're basically just doing the same thing here that you did on both sides. Now after that is all done, we want to go ahead and then grab ourselves some item frames. And this could be more of a Java um, type of a design here, but if you're on Java you can place down item frames underneath the end rods and the skeleton or the player heads. And we're going to place down gray stained glass panes in it. And what it does is it kind of helps um, hide the white a little bit better just kind of helps keep that deck color a little bit more consistent. Obviously it's not perfect just due to Minecraft and its limitations but uh, really it's kind of a nice way just to at least show that there's this deck here should be gray. And we'll just place it down on the blocks that you can see right here. And that's pretty much um, what you're going to do for that. And also on the back here as well underneath this fence gate we'll do the same thing just like that. And with that all done, that's going to pretty much wrap up everything we have there for layer number three for the build. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on to layer number four. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number four. For layer four to start with, we're going to place down our redstone repeater on top of this block right here. And we're going to go and separate the notches like from each other like so. We'll then place down an oak wood fence post here. And on Java, we have this thing called a barrier block. You can use the command slash give at p uh, barrier and it should pop up and autofill and you should be able to get your get it like so. Uh, basically, it's this invisible block that we can attach items to, such as a ladder on the side of it. And we'll just do basically that on the sides there. So um, kind of a cool technique there to show these uh, little ladders here and using the barrier blocks. So that's what we're going to go and use there. Now, after that is done behind that, uh, we're going to place down a dragon head. And then we want to go and then place down a granite wall. To the sides here of the granite wall, we're going to place down an end rod on top of those ones from the previous layer. We'll then place down a white bed, followed by another granite wall, and then a oak wood fence gate, which can be opened toward the uh, wall here, so like down on both sides. We're going to go and then place down a white bed, going back again, and then a redstone repeater, like so, in this space here. We'll then place down a uh, oak wood fence post, like so, and we'll also take a barrier block again, and we're going to place down a barrier block on top of this end rod. And we're going to go ahead and then take our stone buttons and place down two buttons on the sides there of that barrier block. So it's going to look just like that here on the back. And also we're going to place down our redstone repeater on top of this stripped oak wood block. And we're going to go ahead and separate the notches like that on top of our rear turret. At this point also we'll go ahead and grab our debug stick here again for our Java players. And we'll go ahead and go to these pistons and we can just go ahead and right click them like that to get rid of that wood portion like so. And once you have that all done, that's going to wrap up everything we have there for layer 4. And with that, we'll probably just go ahead and move into our last final layers of the build. Moving into our last final layers here, we have layers 5 through 10. For these layers to go ahead and get started with, we're going to place down an andesite wall on top of this fence post. We'll then go ahead and grab ourselves a uh, item frame. We're going to place down an item frame here, and then we're going to place down a snowball in the item frame. Uh, once we have that done, we're going to go ahead and place down another oak wood fence post going up, followed by a second fence post. Coming off the sides of the second fence post, we're going to go and take oak wood signs and we're going to go and wrap them around the fence post like so, except for the back side. This back side, we're going to go ahead and place down a end rod coming off of it like so. We then want to go ahead and go up from the end rod and we're going to go and then go back at an angle and place down a second end rod. And then up from this fence post here, we're going to place down two end rods and then a iron bar on the very top here. 
and then come off both sides of this uh, very top end rod. We're going to place down another end rod to the sides. So it's going to look like that there for your uh, basically frontal mass. Now, once we have that all done, uh, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves a just a random block, uh, some block that you can tell apart from the rest of the build. So for us, we can just go ahead and use a uh, wool block or something. And we're going to go ahead and then place down a ladder. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and basically build two blocks up from the ladders that we placed in the previous layer. And this is going to be more of a Java player application. We're going to place down the ladders on the inside here of the blocks and then using our debug stick here, we're going to left click until we get selected facing. We'll go ahead and rotate these around so that they connect up to the sides here of our um, mass. And you'll basically do that to both sides like that and it kind of creates that. Um, rigging that goes up there. Unfortunately, there really isn't a good alternative if you are not on Java and don't have access to the debug stick. Um, so that's just kind of an unfortunate, um, you know, feature you may have to go ahead and disregard. Anyways, though, that's it for our front mast. Um, one thing also is we're going to place down the oakwood sign on the side of this um, wall right there. After that, though, we're going to go ahead and place down a uh, polished blackstone wall on top of here, and then another wall on top of this section here. Coming off that uh, wall, we're going to place down an oakwood trapdoor to both sides. And we're going to follow that up with an iron frame and then a snowball in the iron frame. Same thing over here, just like that. Now, once we get to this point also, we want to go ahead and place down a block that's going to kind of come off these end rods here to the sides. And also from the previous layer, I did forget to mention is that we do want to build this end rod up here, uh, up one as well. And same thing right here. So these end rods should have just been brought up, uh, but I did forget to do that. So just make sure those get brought up. And again, for Java players, we're going to be going ahead and using a technique here for these um, end rods by kind of building a block that goes up from them and kind of out to the side. So it's going to look like this. We'll then go ahead and grab ourselves levers. We're going to place down levers on the side of these blocks. So they should be kind of directly above those end rods. We'll then left click with our debug stick on the levers until we get selected um, wall and or selected facing wall. And then we're going to right click each one of these levers to go ahead and set them on top of those end rods. Then using our debug stick here, we're gonna go ahead and change the facing so that the levers face toward the inside of the build. And again, these are just kind of like the cranes or the um, you know mechanisms here for the lifeboats to lower them in the water or to remove them from the ship. And basically that is all we want there for that. So really nice looking design there for it. We'll also go ahead and grab some barrier blocks. And while we're at it, we're gonna go and go from this polished blocks to wall at an angle. And then we're gonna place down another one that goes up at an angle. And we're just gonna go and then take our stone buns and place them on the sides here of those blocks. So just like that, pretty straightforward and simple. Then the back here, we're gonna go to the top of this fence post here. We're gonna place down one more fence post on top of that, fall by oakwood signs. They're gonna go ahead and wrap around the um, four, all four sides here of this fence post. So just like this. We're gonna go ahead and then place down another fence, or another two fence posts that go up. We'll then grab ourselves an end rod. We're gonna place down an end rod here. Then a second one that's gonna kind of go up at an angle from it. We then wanna go ahead and go to the top of the fence post. We're gonna place down two end rods up, end rod to both sides of this very top one. And we're gonna go ahead and place down a uh, iron bar on the very top. So just like that. We then wanna take our barrier blocks and we're just going to place down a row of barrier blocks that's gonna go in between our mass. So starting at that very top end rod on both sides. And we're gonna take our stone buns and wrap them around the sides. Same thing over here. Just like that. After that's done, we wanna go and then place down a barrier block that's gonna go down like this. And then one on top of this end rod here. Again, we're gonna place down our stone buns on the sides there. We're gonna go and then uh, go up from this barrier block here at an angle. So kind of again, that staircase pattern kind of going up like so. And again, we're gonna do the same thing we did before with stone buns on both sides. So it should look like that there on the back. And once we have that all complete there, that is gonna wrap up my design here for USS Olympia, uh, a uh, protected cruiser for the United States pre-World War One. Um, it's a really cool build, and uh, you know, one of our kind of only pre-World War One ships that we have actually on the channel. So definitely a cool ship in terms of its, uh, you know, rarity on the channel. I guess you could say in our path to build fleets, uh, but still a cool one nonetheless. And hopefully we'll see some more of these pre-World War One type ships. Uh, anyways, though, um, again, big special thanks to Patreon supporter the Grandpa for making this tutorial possible. And if you do want to be using this build, I do ask you guys to give me proper credit for it. This being linked from a sound build, tweak to my channel, or his video with his desert and social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for your freezer for a project you guys are working on, overall enjoy the build, have fun with it, and all that fun stuff. Um, and with that, that's pretty much all I have for this video. Thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This is me here, 204, and I'll see you guys next time.